Okay, this is part two of the hybrid exciter. And when I showed the schematic in part one, you would see that the L1, C1 were reversed. And here you can see on the board where this was normally where C1 was, and this is where L1 was. But they're reversed now, and the reason for that is that when C1 is up here, the impedance is higher and it's more sensitive to your tuning wand when you attempt to tune it. So by moving it down here on the other side and having the L1 in between C1 and the base of the transistor, you reduce the impedance and the effect of external capacity or parasitic capacity from your tuning wand to your body when you tune it. Here you can see the two capacitors CA and CB. Here's the AV plug coming off of the L3. This wire here is just stuck in there. That's what we're going to use to show you the spectrum when this is operating. I'm not going to use a battery. I am going to use the fuse that's on the battery though. So I have the plus coming from the power supply hooking to the plus of the battery and it comes out of the fuse and goes into the hybrid uh, exciter. And then what I'm going to do is the negative is coming down here as shown on the diagram in part one right here to the negative of the battery which is also the junction of CA and CB. Now I don't have these mounted at this time mainly because CB which is right here is already starting to puff out the aluminum can on the end so I don't really permanently mount them although this is a prototyping board so you see everything is socketed. Here's the uh, L2 capacitor which separates the DC off of the collector of the transistor and L3. So let me go ahead and fire this guy up and show you what we're going to be doing. Okay, I'm going to be using 12.6 volts. And uh, you can see now that the power supply is off. There's no current being drawn, no power being dissipated. We'll go back over here and you can see the spectrum analyzer. What I have marked on the spectrum analyzer right now is a very strong FM channel that's coming in, which is 92.6 FM and you will see the exciter in here and you'll see the characteristic pattern that you want to obtain for the hybrid exciter. So let me go ahead and turn on the power supply. Okay we're on and you can see that we're at 12.6 volts no current, no wattage. And you see this is definitely hooked to the power supply Please disregard the mess. I've been doing a lot of work the last few days. So here's the power supply coming down, going right into the hybrid, and like I said, the plus side of the battery through this fuse back down into the hybrid. And here we have the characteristic bandwidth and the frequencies that you want to see. You see the stair stepping. Here's the FM channel that I marked. And the primary frequency here, let me take and move the marker over a bit and get that guy set up, is 15.1 megahertz. And you can see that the span is 102 megahertz and I have the center frequency set at 60 megahertz. So that's kind of a characteristic of what you want to see. Now you see my probe fell out here. I'll just stick it back over here in the coil so we get a little more signal coming into it. Okay, so anyway, that's how this uh, circuit's configured. And I will come back here in, in part three and explain in more detail what's going on and what the value of this coupling capacitor should be. I've already explained L1C1. And you can look at the circuit diagram in part one, see how CACB and the AV plug is configured. But you see we're operating. There's absolutely no problem in that. I do not, I'm sorry, I do not have a load on it at this time, although I could demonstrate that if you hold on a second. Found my little K2 
characteristic probe here and you can see that we have energy coming out through the probe. So we have we have this oscillator operating there's no doubt about that. I'm holding the camera of course and getting this thing in the right place is a little problematic but anyway it is working as we can attest to here and this is the type of frequency spread that you want to see with a fundamental frequency sitting around 15, 15.1. Now I must say before I leave though on part two and move on to part three that the oscillator does not vary. Let me take and uh, get my tuning wand in here so that I can tune C1 and I'm going to go all the way around a full 360 degrees and you don't see the characteristic jump that you used to see in the 181. The 181 is had actually two different positions where you could uh, see increased current, decrease current. Now if you watch as I rotate this, watch the frequency spectrum I'm going a full 360 degrees around and you can see what's happening and we get to the ideal point. Now did you see how this locks in? This is exactly where you want to be and at that point we're consuming very very little energy from the power source and with the battery it's even more interesting so the hybrid circuit is obviously something that someone may want to take and try to replicate. Okay, we'll move on to part three. I have more to say about it.